Torture? Yeah. That's not torture. Well, what was that then? That's just public entertainment. Well, what's torture? Come with me. All right. Get on. Steve, grab your pillory, we're going. Come on. Come on, Steve. Through the gap. See it as a fashion accessory. Jeffries agreed to take me and Brooksy back 500 years and show us some secrets of the torture trade in the bowels of the Clink Museum, built on the site of the original Clink prison dating back to 1151. Jeffrey, what is the point of torture? If you can't get the truth by any other means or a confession, physical persuasion. So, Jeff, when would you say was the golden age of torture? The Tudor period. The home of torture in Tudor, England, was undoubtedly the Tower of London. Over the centuries, it broke the bones and spirits of figures such as Guy Fawkes and Anne Askew. Just the sight of the tower's infamous torture chamber was often enough to get a confession. The first steps were to bring the suspect down to the torture chamber and show him the instruments of torture. Let right. him look at them. It's the thought of physical torture, first of all, yes. which is almost level one of torture. Yes. It's mental torture. Yes. We'll show him what could physically happen. If he resisted. What crimes would you have to commit to actually be tortured? High treason. You know what high treason is? No, but you're going to tell me, hopefully. The major part of it is seeking to remove the sovereign from the throne. Low treason is when a wife conspires to get rid of her husband or a servant conspires to get rid of his master, the head of the family. High treason didn't just mean an attempt to kill the head of state. It could be applied for crimes as seemingly innocuous as producing literature that was deemed anti-British. So basically, write a book saying you didn't like a decision the king had made and you could be tortured to death. Yeah, we think we've got it bad. Say if hypothetically, Steve, yeah, sort of liked the idea of my house and my family because his had got, say, cross with him. And Steve, say, started hypothetically talking to, like, one of the cameramen here or, or our producer about how he could perhaps, you know, do me in, then already he'd be on the road to, to low treason and perhaps a bit of torture. Would that be enough for me to, say, start on a bit of torture with, say, hypothetically... Bring in a complaint to ...an expert that might happen to be here? It's hypothetical, no, Steve. I can see where this is going. I, I just want to clear it up, is all I'm saying. It's better to get rid of doubt. Go on, then. Why do I always let myself get talked into this? Come on, Jeff. Let's torture him. Petty or low treason usually refers to the murder of the head of a household, but it can also be applied to a servant who'd forged his master's seal or indeed committed adultery with his master's wife or daughter. But since Steve hasn't gone that far, we've toned down our first torture. Known simply as the chair, it's normally covered in hundreds of sharp metal spikes, and once strapped in, the victim would be impaled slowly using their own body weight. So, as you can see, um, Steve uh, is hypothetically now uh, accused of low treason. He's now, well, he's now factually sitting in the uh, in the torture chair. But Jeff, you'd like to just lift this over, I and, think uh, so. and we can sort of begin now again. Short back and sides. This is just short back and sides. <laughs> and we would have probably, if we were a couple of torturers, had a bit of banter like that. Exactly. We would have enjoyed that, wouldn't we, of the course. two of us? Say, we would have gone, oh, tooth extraction, sir. And we'd have done for it. And probably taken one out for a bit yes. of a laugh, you know, just throwing it in there. Here's a nice um, one we've got today. Yeah, yes, it certainly is, Jeff. Oh, it's going to be a busy morning. And what happens, Jeff, if I'm going like this? See, I'm going, um, why are you trying to remove me as head of the family? Why? Why? How long could someone survive with the, with the spikes going up there? I mean, presumably they pass out eventually. Eventually, yes. We wouldn't kill him, though. A victim could survive on the chair for over a day, as no spike would actually puncture any vital organs, and wounds would be closed by the spikes themselves, delaying the loss of blood. So, with Steve being strangulated in our torture chair, and literally sitting on the edge of his seat, let's go to our next instrument of torture. There were many different methods of torture devised and used at the tower. Victims would be crushed, stretched, whipped, burnt, weighed down and strung up. Although some people resisted, one thing is for certain. It was just a matter of time before a confession was gained. How long would it generally take before someone cracked through torture and confessed to everything? You can't tell because some people got more resistance. They are more determined to cling on to their principles mm. uh, and refuse to give up, no matter what the cost. They're, they're prepared to die for their faith 
or for what they believe in. And what instrument of torture really cracked people the quickest? Skeffington's jives. Oh, it sounds great. It sounds like a 50s dance craze, but what was it? Because the prisoner, <laughs> after being right... But Jeff! Hang on one second. Shut up! It's hurting! How much do you weigh? Sorry, uh, Jeff. It meant that the poor crippled victim of the ruck had to be supported across the green back to the tower in which he'd been imprisoned because the ruck was too cumbersome to take up the spiral stairway to the prisoner. Skeffington's jives, also known as the scavenger's daughter, was basically a highly portable method of torture. It compressed the victims into an excruciating hunched position until he gave in or his back was broken. And the pressure continued... Back was broken. And the pressure continued until blood exuded from other bodily orifices. Oh, man, that must have... Sorry, Steve. Man, that must have hurt. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Now, you might think I'm standing on Steve for fun, and you'd be right. But actually, this isn't too far from the truth. In Tudor times, they used the well-known ye olde crushing a man with heavy rockers piled on a board technique. It was more elegantly known as pain forte et dure, or in other words, a firm and lasting punishment. Steve, I know you've got a question there. So, Jeff, how long could something actually last like this? How long would he have survived something like this? Is that what you wanted to know, Steve? Yes. Yeah, it's all right, I can, I can do it. Go on. It would depend on the man's age and physique and determination because the weights would be continually added. OK. Crushing his chest, breaking his ribs, and that would continue until he decided to plead guilty or not guilty. Now, the problem was, yeah. if he pleaded guilty, mm -hmm. his valuables, his belongings, his house, would be forfeit to the Crown. Are you listening to this, Steve? All your mudlarking stuff, all your shed. You're not piping up about your shed now, are you? So he would be determined to stick it out as long as he possibly could. OK. But mostly death overtook him. Torture sometimes took place even after a prisoner's fate was decided, as without a signed confession, the Crown couldn't seize his assets. So I think Steve has probably endured enough here. So let's take him on to our next instrument yes. of torture. Yes. What did you say, Steve? I confess! Oh, Jeff, 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 Jeff. A confession. I knew it. Wonderful. For those who confessed to treason, there was only one outcome. Death. So, Jeff, Steve has confessed to treason. The execution's very much in the bag. We've chosen to go with the axe and block. Very old school. What were some of the other methods and who got executed in which way? You were hanged, drawn and quartered was the most appalling way to go in front of the entire crowd. You were only half hanged and cut down while still alive. You were then drawn. Your stomach was slit open by the executioner wielding his slitting knife. Oh, dear. His viscera, his innards, would be torn out and he would be castrated. What else? What about women? Women found guilty of high treason. They were burnt at the stake. It was forbidden for women to be hung, drawn and quartered on the grounds of public decency. Not because people would be offended by the sight of a woman being strung up, having her insides torn out and being chopped up into little pieces, because they didn't want to see her naked. That was vulgar. So beheading was mainly reserved for nobility, was it? Exactly. That is because the axe is the nearest thing to be killed by cold steel, as if in battle on the battlefield. OK. It was a privilege. Was beheading a quick and painless death, was it? If it was achieved by one stroke, yes, but that very rarely happened. Mm. Don't forget that the axe doesn't cut. It is a chopper. Right. It doesn't slice as a sword does. That crushes its way through bone and muscle, and therefore it's an appallingly savage weapon to use. If the victor was lucky, one stroke, but more often than not, several, before the head was completely severed from the body. Not always the executioner's fault, because he couldn't clearly see the back of the neck. Yes, OK. I mean, I can really clearly see Steve's neck here. Just take back Steve's stuff. Steve, can you just lean forward a little bit there? Are you comfy? No. OK. But just Steve, I'm not going to do anything, Steve. I'm just saying, so just putting this cuff. I mean, the back of the neck seems so small, doesn't it? 
Do you head forward a second there, Steve. And don't forget. This is not funny, that thing is sharp. You've got these tens of thousands of people yes. watching. It's like being at a golf tournament. Yes, and they're watching me, and, and I've got the foot. axe, Jeff. Get your foot off my hand. And his neck is exposed. Take it too far this time. I mean, really, all I have to do in this situation is literally, I mean, I could just bring that up almost like that, couldn't I? And I just bring it down really sharply. The neck looks so thin and fragile. It's so. It's so tempting. I've worked with him for a few weeks now. He keeps winding me up about the shed and the knee pads, and frankly, the temptation is really there. Funny. I can literally just. Hey, no! Get in. Hi, hi, hi. What are you doing? Steve, do you know something? I really question your commitment to the show there. You know, you really wimped out, you wimped out. Commitment, yes. No, you wimped out.